Yeah, hedge fund managers making a million dollars an hour. You know, it's crazy, right? There's money everywhere. There's money in everything. I want to help you. Start your business today. Come join my royal family. Subscribe to Casino is the name. Yo, what's going on right now? You watching Casino is the name. And in this video, we're going to talk about none other than professionalism. Now, why are we going to talk about professionalism? Well, this is a reoccurring topic that I keep getting from people. And it just, it just needs a video. I just need to do a video about professionalism because so many people don't fully understand what it means to be a true professional or what professionalism is, okay? So I just want to cover a few things, right? Just some things to at least maybe start to get the 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 get your mind going in the right direction, okay? So people have been coming to me asking for advice on a career, they want to change their lives. You know, they, they're tired of nickel and diamond. They're tired of working in certain industries. They're, they're ready to get into an office job. They want to be able to work from home. They want to be able to make seventy, eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a year. And they're, they're desperate for a change. Or so they say. Or so they say, right? And so... You know, when I get to asking questions, because I'm down to help people, right? So, and it's typically somebody refers somebody to me or something like that, where somebody that I know gave them my phone number and, you know, they called me. And I'm, and I'm down to help people, okay? The problem is I get the feeling like I'm wasting my time because the person that I may be talking to may not be so receptive of my suggestions or they may be so far away from from being able to even be employed by a reputable organization in a real professional position because of their mindset the mindset is oh my god you would not believe the things that i hear and people expect to be perceived as a professional or want to be in a position. They know they're not professionals, right? They just feel like anybody can do it or like, well, I may not be a professional now, but if I get the job, then, you know, because I'm looking at the people who do the job, they're not better than me at nothing. When it might be quite the opposite, they might actually be a lot better than, than you at things, right? And I don't necessarily mean like um, at doing the stuff that you're used to doing or, or, or physically better, like as far as they may not be able to jump higher or run faster. But when it comes to answering emails and sending out a professional email or even knowing how to check email, believe it or not, it's people who don't know how to check email and they want to be able to work from home and they don't have, they're, they're not computer literate, right? They, they don't, have a computer, not familiar really with using computers. And I'm talking about grown people. I'm talking about 25, 26, 30 years old, 35, 40 years old. It's people. Trust me, I've spoken to them and I was just as surprised as anyone else. Now, when it comes to a cell phone, they can work the phone, but computers, no. No, no, they can't work computers. And a work from home job, would typically require typically require you be on a computer typically and they have zero computer skills um i also want to tell you that telling people that you're going to use ai to help you do the to do the reports and 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 write the emails is probably not a good idea as well I'm only saying this because I know this has come up in a conversation with me. And I just want to say that's not a good idea, you know, especially if you're talking about working for the government. They don't want to hear you're going to input information from 
uh, that, that, that they're providing for you for maybe a soldier or a veteran or an organization. They don't want you putting in sensitive information into AI. For I mean, you would think that it would be obvious as to the reason why they had you do a background check and and gave you the information and wanted you to write it up because putting it out into the AI atmosphere just probably just not a good idea. This is just probably not a good idea. And they probably won't think that that's a brilliant idea. Um, what else? Um, emails. Let's 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 start there. Emails. Think about this. You're coming to me and you're saying, hey, can you help me out? Right. And I'm saying, sure. Uh, send me your resume. No, and that's if you have a resume. Let's say you send me your resume, and on your resume it says it's your your email is is ridiculous. Okay, let's just call it ridiculous, right? Like um, your your email may say something like "Never gonna get a job. All I do is be gangster every day at Gmail." Okay. You, you might want to change that. A professional email may be your first name at Gmail or Yahoo or whatever. Um, uh, or it could be your first dot last name at whatever. And this is your personal. This is not even, you know, the business email. This is not one that they've already, they, they've given you since you've been hired. This is just an, a proper email that should go with your resume. Um if you're if you're seeking employment, okay, you would not be surprised. You would be surprised. I don't say you would not be. You would be surprised how many people use like some moniker in their pro professional email that goes on their resume. And if I'm a let, let's just say I'm a professional, right? Now it took me some time to get here. Okay, it took me some time, some classes, a lot of coaching and training to get to the point where I am. So I've been slowly progressing along the way, right? But I'm a, I'm a real professional. And you come to me and you're seeking a job. As soon as I see your email, I can't take you serious. I cannot take you serious. Believe it or not, it's it's as sad as it may sound, it's really like that. It's really like that, okay? It's, it's really like it's... Now, also, resume. Let's go to resume. Resume. How important, how important is your resume? Oh, you know what? Before we go to resume, I want to go back to email because business owners. So professionalism is not just about if you're trying to get a job. It's just that most people are trying to get a job, right? But professionalism is also in business owners. If you're trying to start a business, you're trying to have a small business, I understand. I did too. I did, I still have my Gmail, even though I have a professional email. Um, but your company name at Gmail for most, most, well, I ain't going to say most. People who make decisions they, a lot of them actually care if you have a Gmail or if you have your your name at yourcompanyname.com. And you could get it through Google or G Suite or whatever, C Suite or whatever. You can get a professional email, which is yourcompanyname.com. So it'll be your name or something else or info or whatever at yourcompanyname.com. They don't want to see your company name at Gmail. They don't. I'm just telling you what true professionalism is. True professional prof, true professionalism is. Now they're not going to expect you to have that um, as an employee. So if you're applying for a job and you got a resume, nobody's expecting you to have, you know, your first name dot com, you know, something like that. They're not expecting that. So you can have a Gmail, Yahoo, whatever. It's when you're a business owner, they look at your email. And they, they do judge you based off of that. Just saying, just saying. I, you do what you want to. Have you have I gotten work with my Gmail? Yes. But, you know, the professionals pulled me in and said, hey, if you want to continue getting work, you want to change your email. 
All right, I'm gonna do that. So I did it immediately. All right, what else? Um, oh, okay. Also, let's talk resume. So resume. <sighs> How important is a resume when trying to get a job? How important is a resume when trying to get a job? <sighs> it is vital. Even small businesses have asked me for a resume. Even small businesses, you know, which can hire me. Like if I know the owner or somebody say, hey, here's the owner of this company. You're looking for a job. You can go over here and get this job. And I know I'm a shoe in. I've spoken to the owner. They saying come by, whatever. They still say, bring your resume. They still have told me that. They still have. So how important is a resume when, when looking for a professional or trying to have a professional career, how important is your resume? Is it more important than your education? Hmm, that's a good question, right? Is your resume more important than your education? It is, it is more important. Your resume is more important than your level of education. It is. It is. So education is just a part that of some of what goes on a resume. It's just a part. Now it may be necessary to do a job, it may be all of those things, but it is more important typically in a professional career, your resume is more important than your level of education. I didn't, I didn't make the rules here, all right? I didn't make the rules. Your resume is more important than your level of education in a professional career. I didn't, I didn't make the rules. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, education goes on your resume and if hired they'll verify they'll they'll ask for transcripts and all of that but typically you come in there saying hey this is my resume this is how it looks this is my this is my identification this is me advertising myself this is me letting you know what i'm capable of what i've done what i can do for you my level of professionalism so how many people do you think that I come across that do not have a resume? Zero resume. They, I, I, I meet tons of people who don't have a professional resume. Now, I've created my resume and my resume is pretty, pretty nice. It got me to this point where I'm at right now. My next level, though, I'm, I'm probably going to have to um, not like not. Like when I go for SES, I ain't gonna even. This ain't even a probably. I'm gonna have to pay for that 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 resume. I'm gonna pay to for for a company to produce me a professional resume for me to go after SES level positions. Now I got some years to go before I got to do all of that. But this resume isn't fifty dollars. No, this resume is a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand. Maybe fifteen hundred. I really don't know. It could be fifteen hundred. It could be seven fifty. Whatever it is, I'm gonna have to pay it. For me to get to the what I want, I'm not gonna build that myself. Can it? Is it possible for me to do it? Yes, but I'd rather go to a professional who deals with these things. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yes, your resume is very important. I'm me, and I'm willing to pay for a resume, okay? So even, even if I was starting out and, and knowing what I know now, I wish I had to pay for a resume when I was graduating from college. I wish I would have paid for a resume before, like, like bought a professional, you know, went through a service and bought a professional resume. That would have been vital. I mean, that, been, that would have been vital for my career. I'll probably be making a lot more money. Probably. 
right? But so many things you don't know. Like I said, I've been going through this process. Now I'm at a point where I see the value of a resume, especially a professional resume. So when people hit me up and they say, yo, I'm trying to get to that, you know, I want to be like you. And I'm like, okay, well, let me see your resume. They send me their resume. I look at their resume. And then I say, I'm going to send you my resume. All right. And I'm not expecting them to have the same level of education and stuff like that or same level of uh, detail or jobs, the type of jobs that I've had or as many jobs as I've had in the positions that I've held. I'm not expecting them to have that. I don't care if you worked at AutoZone. I don't care if you worked at Waffle House. When I send you my resume, is your resume looking laid out like mine? Just in style. Because if, it's, if you're going out to an entry-level position, nobody's expecting you to have executive-level leadership. Nobody's expecting that, okay? It's, a, it's okay. You don't got to have that. But when, they, when you lay your resume out, what am I looking at? Is it, does, it, does it feel good when I look at it? Is it legible? Does it make sense? Okay? I don't, I don't care if you were a, a cook. You had customer service in there. Where's the customer service? I don't see it. I don't see I don't see the organized. I don't see that you were organized. Put it in there. Even if you were a cook, everybody has had to check email. So put something in there where I can tell that you can handle yourself in an office or in in a, you know, even though you were a cook, like can you handle yourself in an office environment? Can you are you know, are you computer literate? Like put something in there. If you're trying to get this office job, well, I can tell. Now, everybody had to check email. But if you're applying for an office job and all you tell me is, is you know, 30 recipes, that's, that, that, tie that into this job. You might need a professional resume done. You might need some help. And that's okay. Seek it out. There are people who do it for free because I know you're thinking, well, I ain't got no money. Why would I pay to get a resume done? I ain't got no money. Yeah, I understand. There are free options out there. I'm just saying, once you're at a point and, and, and you're ready to go to that, you got a couple of dollars and you're ready to invest in yourself, then do that. All right? Now, the opposite of a resume is for a business owner is actually the capability statement. I would suggest you going through somebody to create you a capability statement. I did it. I paid for a capability statement. Okay? My capability statement is very, very nice. Okay? For my company. But my resume is still something that I know that I want to, I'm, I'm not even want to, I'm going to do because I don't want to, but I, I'm going to do it because I don't want to spend the time and energy and effort in learning how to build an SES executive level resume. I don't want to spend that much time doing that. So my I'm I'm saying all this to say is for for a reason. The reason is the level of professionalism when you're coming and you threw a resume together this morning before you walked in here because you don't really have a resume and you just threw some words on there or you copy pasted something or you just you found something generic online and you just put your name at the top and you're going to come in here with that. That's great. I hear you. Right, you got to do what you got to do, right? But I'm coming in here with mine, right? And I really did those jobs and I can really speak the language and I understand this and that, you know. And then, of course, then there's the interview, right? If you ever made it to the point where you've beat out 100 people like myself, who are professionals, well, let's say not everybody's going to be professional, right? Let's say you're applying for a job and 50 people apply for it and it's seven solid real professionals, right? Who got professional grade resumes. They have, um, they, they, they have the right mindset. They have invested in their education, um, you know, they, they have a certain level of professionalism from other other jobs that they've been in. Um, 
they're still going to, they're, they're, that's who you're going to be competing against, right? And so when you go in there and you might be like, well, this is a low position, this is a low graded, like the position may not, may be an entry level position, but there are some people who are starting over and they're like me and they're starting over and they're applying for entry level positions. Now, if they're like me, I was too overqualified for entry level positions. I, I couldn't get an entry level position to save my life. I just couldn't. They just wouldn't give me one, right? They just wouldn't. <laughs> I couldn't get one. So, um, so, but if you're going in there, you're going up against people who are taking their job search serious, right? That's your competition. That's your competition. Unless you know somebody, that's your competition. And nine times out of 10, even if you know somebody and you come up in here and this other person is 10 times more qualified, at least based off of their resume, they're more qualified. I, got, I can't even justify hire, hiring you. Look at your resume. I can't take this in there. You got one line about how you worked at Waffle House. You got one line about how you worked at McDonald's. And then you got 10 years of blank unemployment where you didn't volunteer, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't, you didn't do it. Like, where were you? Where were you? Okay? What happened? Were you in school? Like, what were you doing? Were you sick? Like, tell me. Put, I don't know. Tell me something. Where were you? Okay? Like, I, how am I supposed to justify this? Because even though I know you, I got to go in here with these other hiring managers and your resume is going to be sitting beside everybody else. All right? And I don't have time to fix your resume today because you just brought this to me this morning. Like, <laughs> you, this is who you're going to be. But these are the things that you have to think about and the people you're going to compete against. Now, when you go in here and you're finally able to land that, that interview, you need to do your homework you need to say okay i'm interviewing for a budget analyst position i'm interviewing for a budget analyst position what questions do they ask budget analysts in interviews you can google this stuff i promise you there's people on youtube and, and other places and they make videos and tell you the questions and and you can study them they are typical they're not all the same but they're like the typical questions that will be asked if you're going in for a nursing position. Registered nurse interview questions. What, what is that? Search it. Study it. Learn it. Prepare yourself. Then go in there professional looking. Don't, don't be, be uh, at Walmart in your night clothes and blah. Oh, shoot, I got an I gotta interview in a minute. Let me run to the house and throw this shirt on and then shoot back up here. No, go in there right. Go in there like you really want this job, man. Go in there like, you, like your life depends on it. Treat it like that. There's a huge difference between professionalism. I'm, a so, I'm showing up in a suit. Suit, sh jacket, tie. I'd rather be overdressed than underdressed. I'd rather be too professional than too unprofessional. Okay? Trust me, I done went in there with people who... I, I'm, I'm, I try to be dressed more professional or at least at the same level, but more professional than the people interviewing me. I want to make them look at themselves like, man, I, you know, when I, when I go in there, they like, oh, oh, OK. OK, I see. I see. What's up? You, you serious? Oh, yes, sir. I am. Full attention. I've studied, I've prepared for this. When they ask me questions, now don't get me wrong, I've been asked questions that I, 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 I wasn't expecting, you know? But, you know, I was also prepared for that too. Like, hey, you might be asking something I don't know, so stay loose, stay, stay focused or whatever. You know your shit, you know? You know your shit, all right? But yeah, I've been asked questions that I, I wasn't prepared for, but nine times out of, I probably, let's say about 80%, of any questions in an interview I was asked, I knew the answer to. Oh, I was prepared for. I studied it. I was ready. Ready. So, 
you know, understanding how to even interview is a thing. Showing up the right way for an interview is a thing, okay? Some of y'all will be, you know, riding around with your cousin because they got a lot of online, you know, Zoom interviews and, and stuff like that. Microsoft Teams interviews and stuff like that. So you can do it from your phone. Some of y'all got your kids uh, in, in the background. And you say, hold on, y'all. Let me walk to another room and close this door. You know, uh, I had forgot about this interview. My bad. That's how some of y'all some of y'all be out there like this. Some of y'all be out there like this. Okay? Some of y'all are like, oh, hold on. Is it okay if I keep my camera on? Because my hair messed up. Like, some of y'all, some of y'all really be... Saying these things, it's it's I'm not. It's true. It's it happens. Okay. And so you know it's it's and then you're wondering like why didn't you get a job and then you feel like the world is against you. No, you got to step up your professionalism. Even me, if I go for a job and I don't get it, right? You know it's in the back of my mind because I'm me. In the back of my mind, I need to step it up. That means somebody else out there is more Because I check off every box I check off every box I got the education I got the career history I'm a veteran I'm a disabled veteran I I got a Schedule A letter I, I'm You name it I'm experienced I've, I've been in audit I've been in budget I've been in uh, traditional accounting I've, I've been in healthcare management I've been in um, on the flight line, working on avionics, working on navigation, radar, weapon systems. I was scoring the top one percent of the Air Force. What what more do you want from me? Okay, okay. I, I got a top secret clearance with an SCI. Like what? I can pass the background checks. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't have no blemishes on my professional record. Whatsoever. God damn, I sound good. I sound good to me. Right? You know? Done the budget for special forces. Special operations command. I did the budget for them, man. Special forces. The joint special forces. Not just one. Not just Navy SEAL. Not just Green Beret. All of them. It's, it was, it's part of my... My resume, it's part of my history. It's, it's in my bio. You dig? My shit is impressive. In my opinion, of course. But are there people who have even more impressive resumes? Yes. This is who my competition is. So when I'm thinking about that, I'm not like, dang, I didn't get the job? I'm thinking like, I got, I got some work to do. I'm a registered mediator in the state of Georgia. I can mediate your civil cases, right? I got some work to do. I might need to go to law school to get where I'm trying to go. But it's a it's a different mentality. I'm not blaming society on me not make getting a job. I'm saying I need to step up my professionalism. Was it my earrings? Should I have taken them out until I got the job? Things like that. It's things like that that I. There's still things that I still could work on. Right? Anyway, I just want to come on here and talk to you guys about professionalism. Hopefully you find some value in this video. I got a screen over here. That's why I keep looking over here. But I hope that you guys find some value in this video. Anyway, please get in the comment section. Let me know. Let me hear it. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Anyway, right now you're watching Casino as a name. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and we out. Yeah, hedge fund managers making a million dollars an hour. You know, it's crazy, right? There's money everywhere. There's money in everything. I want to help you. Start your business today. Come join my royal family. Subscribe to Casino is the name.